Take a look at this. Is this the hardest boss in Monster Hunter? That's not really an easy question to answer, but I think I'm pretty confident in the conclusion that I've come to. So to explain my reasoning, let's look at some ground rules. I won't be putting too much weight into the numbers for two reasons. Number one, a large HP pool does not make a boss difficult. This isn't just a Monster Hunter thing. I'm sure you can think of a game you've played where you just wailed away at a boss for 30 minutes knowing full well that this wasn't a test of skill, but of patience. Equally, while raising the attack stat could result in a fight that requires you to make less mistakes, it's also generally a boring and artificial way to increase the difficulty. Reason number two is a bit more simple. If we wish to use stats to determine this answer, we can just look at some random anomaly monster because these numbers are silly. That's a lame answer to me, but if you think stats determine challenge, that's totally fine. Your opinion is just as valid as mine. I just have a cheap microphone and a little number next to my name. Last disclaimer, I'll be focusing more on highlighting Primordial Malzeno's moveset than I will on directly comparing it to others. The reason for this will become clear later. Alright, disclaimers out of the way, let's look at... So this fight technically has three phases. It begins with Primordial Malzeno in its normal form, and right off the bat you'll notice something that'll gradually disappear throughout the rest of the fight. You see, Monster Hunter is known for its almost turn-based style of attacks, cooldowns, and punishes, and this first phase perfectly embodies that idea. Naturally, being the last boss in the game, these attacks deal tons of damage and are pretty wide-reaching. However, crucially, they're all very telegraphed and relatively easy to avoid once you know the patterns. It's a simple and fundamental heavy phase of the fight. He's still got a few tricks up his sleeve though, thanks to the follow-ups that are designed to bait and punish counters, just like normal Malzeno but to an even greater degree. For example, there's this attack where he'll stab forwards followed by a swipe. If you counter the first hit, you'll get caught by the second. Or this one where he follows up a tackle with a stab. Malzeno's got tons of combos like this, it's kind of his whole thing, but once you learn what you can and can't counter, along with when it's safe to wirefall and when it's not, you'll quickly see that despite being quite a technically challenging fight, it's still manageable as long as you stay focused and don't panic. It's for this reason that I really, really enjoy this phase of the fight. That brilliant, almost turn-based style of older games in the series really starts to shine through here. In fact, it feels like the entire first phase consists of that style. It's all very simple and fundamental. Those are the two best words to describe how this fight starts, but this gradually changes as the fight goes on. So just based on the first phase alone, this obviously isn't the hardest boss, but things begin to change in phase two. Phase two begins when Primordial Malzeno begins to lose its luster and youthful glow, which are both quickly replaced by an insatiable bloodlust as the monster begins to see red and become far more aggressive towards anything and everything near it. Geismagorm's friends the Curio begin to attack Malzeno, enhancing its attacks with the bloodlust status effect. Naturally, this expands its move set with new attacks like these waves of energy that it can launch at you. But more importantly, this is where the feel of the encounter begins to change. Remember when I said, and right off the bat you'll notice something that'll gradually disappear throughout the rest of the fight? Well, that something is the back and forth nature of this fight. The start of this fight feels almost like an official sporting match where there are rules and regulations. You want to beat your opponent, sure, but there's this level of restraint and regality to Primordial Malzeno that's contrasted by the brutal bloodlust it starts to demonstrate as the fight goes on. There are far more follow-ups, the combos are getting longer, and now the bloodlust and status effect is introduced, which, once induced, forces you to fight even more aggressively as well. It's like the two of you started out boxing in an official match, but as the fight goes on, you eventually end up in an Arby's parking lot at 2 in the morning, slightly inebriated, with nothing on your mind but causing pain to whatever is standing in front of you. That was a weird analogy, but I think you get the idea. Now, this all probably seems pretty tame so far. Sure, the monster is aggressive and counters your own counters, but it's phase three where things really start to change. Let's talk about the final phase where everything we've seen so far is taken to its most extreme conclusion. Phase three is where Malzeno has fully lost it. This is where the fight has deteriorated from a final showdown between two rivals into a desperate and frantic scramble to see who can outlast the other. And I really do think frantic and desperate are the perfect words to describe this phase of the fight. If this phase was the entire fight, there would be no doubt in my mind that this is, without question, the hardest boss I've ever fought in the series. I understand that's quite a claim to make, but let me explain why I'm so confident in that fact. Remember this combo? This is about 16 consecutive hits, each of which deals more than enough damage to cart you if you're not careful with your health. But what really makes this combo so hard to deal with is that tools like wirefalls and counters, the tools you've used so often as get out of jail free cards, don't really work here. That's true for a 
a bit of Rise, most of Sunbreak, and nearly all of the Risen monsters, but here it's taken to a completely different level. Look at the Risen Teostra fight, for example. This fight is quite challenging. If you counter carelessly here, you'll be punished for it. The same is true for Wire Falling. You have to time them correctly and use them when you have an opening to do so. But in this phase, Primordial Malzano moves so aggressively and attacks so frequently that you can't just rely on counters and Wire Falls to save you. Think about it in terms of offense versus defense. You have three defensive chances thanks to your Wire Bugs. In terms of offense, Malzano has 16. Now this isn't to say that counters and Wire Falls don't work here at all. You just can't fully rely on them since there are so many attacks here. This phase isn't just this combo though, and if you can survive it, Malzano will actually give you a massive opening which pretty dramatically lowers the difficulty of this phase, even if they are few and far between. What really makes this phase so challenging is that in between those openings, he'll launch laser beams that cover massive areas, string his attacks together like he's playing a fighting game, and even teleport for quick follow-ups, which is something I've never seen a monster in this series do. When it teleports, you can't track it like every other monster, you just have to know where it's going to end up. And even if you do know where it ends up, this motion is just so fast that it can be really tricky to avoid. With all of that said, you do still have clear openings here, and despite how hectic this phase of the fight is, with enough practice, it, like practically every other monster in the series, is manageable. So is this the hardest boss in the series? Honestly, no, probably not. I'd put it at maybe second or third with the number one being a monster from 4 Ultimate, a monster that I personally struggled with more than any other monster in the series. In fact, I nearly stopped playing these games altogether because I truly couldn't figure out how to beat it. That monster was Xantrios. This may be a surprising choice, but let me explain. 4 Ultimate was my first Monster Hunter game, and Xantrios was the first challenging monster that I ran into. When I fought Primordial Malzeno, I had a little over 2,000 hours in the series, and when I fought Xantrios, I had about 10? Maybe 12? I I think everyone has a monster like this, that first big wall that you have to overcome before you get through the rest of the game and by extension the series. It's that monster that I believe will be the most challenging for most players. Maybe that seems like a cop-out answer, but even if I said Primordial Malzeno is the hardest monster in the series, it still wouldn't be totally accurate. This is because Monster Hunter is a series that prides itself on variety. In Monster Hunter World, there are 14 different weapon types, each of which has its own unique moveset. Some deal damage up close, some from far away, some are fast, some are slow, some are combo heavy, and some are counter heavy. You get the idea. See, one of the best parts of Monster Hunter is that ability to customize your experience. I've mentioned once before why this fact makes judging a monster's difficulty so challenging. However, there's something else that changes the task from challenging to impossible. If I were to compare my experiences with Nergigante versus Magnumalo, I'd have to consider that I used Greatsword when hunting Nergigante for the first time and Switch Axe on Magnumalo. I'd have to consider that Magnumalo is built for a game where the hunter is faster and has more evasive options. I'd have to think about the wire bugs and how they change the combat. I'd have to- you get the point. There are simply too many variables in just this one example of two relatively similar monsters. But the final nail in the coffin here is, I'm just one person. Think about it, even if I somehow plan to compare both of these monsters from the very start and use the exact same weapon on both, and somehow eliminated the variable of wire bugs, there are still hundreds of hours between this hunt and this one. I'm a significantly more experienced hunter Hunter now when I fight Magnumalo than I was when I fought Nergigante, and when I fought Nergigante I was far more experienced than I was when I fought Xamtrios. So is Primordial Malzeno the hardest boss in the series? For me personally, the answer is no, but if you think it is, that's totally fine. Your opinion is just as valid as mine, I just have a cheap microphone and a little number next to my name. Now despite how much I like Primordial Malzeno, it might not even be the best fight in Sunbreak. For the answer to that, check out this video.